Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to try out this new pro model sawmill blade sharpener from Woodland Mills. Woodland Mills has been selling blade sharpeners and blade setters for a long time, but the pro model has just recently come out. So today, we're going to look at the differences between them. We're going to go through the sharpening process. I want to talk about whether or not I think it's worth it to buy a blade sharpener compared to just buying new blades or sending them off to be sharpened. So the first thing I want to do is get this thing set up and ready to go. And I don't usually do unboxings on camera. So I'll be back in just a minute, tell you how long it took to set this up and any problems I had. So I've got it all put together. I've got a car battery down here. I, I keep an extra battery that sometimes I use it to run a winch on my trailer or different things. And I've got that battery on a battery charger, and then you just plug that in right here. Woodland Mills had a choice between making this run off of 12 volt or 120 volt, and I think it's a smart choice to do the 12 volt because a lot of people aren't going to have power, you know, ran out to the building where they sharpen their blades. But now that we've got this on, let's see how it works. I'll bring the camera around here so you can see the controls. The design here is to allow you to have the blade travel without the head turning for setup. We have a red button here that is power off, and then this black button is power on. So now we've turned the power on to the unit. This switch right here controls the movement of the blade. Right now, this little pusher right here is advancing the blade to grind the next tooth. We got two settings here. We're running it on slow. We use this to set it up. And once it's everything is right, and it's grinding right, and it's moving smooth, you flip it on to high speed. And this is the way you run it. Separate from that, we have a switch for the power head. But we're really not to the point where we need to turn any of this on. But I want you to understand how the controls work. Now, if you've watched videos on the standard Woodland Mill sharpener, the advantages to this, one, is a speed advantage. That it's got that high speed setting and you can sharpen a blade over twice as fast. And I think it's either five or seven minutes to sharpen a blade. Additionally, they had an abrasive wheel that was more like your standard wheel on like this bench grinder over here and that would wear down as it sharpened and then you would have to kind of square the wheel up or reshape it with a little tool this is a diamond wheel that's going to last a long time so that's a big upgrade there are some other things but the two biggest things that stood out to me was the better design of the wheel and the speed before I start sharpening blades and even before I set this up I want to go ahead and get the setter out of the box and get it set up. We'll probably use it and then the sharpener. Probably took me about 20 minutes to put that sharpener together. No big deal. The setter is even less. It has a single nut. You put this lever on with one nut and the rest of it just kind of sets in place to be used because depending on which tooth you're setting, you put this on two different ways. This feels like a good time to mention another thing I've learned or a mistake I made with blades, if you have the opportunity at all, store your blades inside. So it made sense to me, just off the top of my head, the sawmill sets outside, not outside, it's covered, but it's in a shed that's kind of open air. I thought, why wouldn't I keep my blades next to the mill so when I need a new one, swap them out real quick? I don't think it's worth it. I would rather store them in this shop or in my garage or any storage area you've got just big enough for a pack of blades. Because mine, all of the ones behind me on the wall here have rust on them from being in such a humid environment outside. So I've got another 10 pack of hardwood blades that are going to stay in here and stay clean. But those are unused and we want to sharpen some of these back here that have been used. So I don't feel like these blades are ruined. I can still sharpen them and use them, but that little bit of rust is just friction. It's friction going through the sharpening setup. It's friction going through the wood. And if you left them outside long enough, you probably would ruin them. But this is just light surface rust. 
Uh, even though this is the first blade sharpener I've owned, I'm very fortunate to have a good friend, Paul Case, who's a regular on the channel, that has been sharpening his own sawmill blades for the last 20 years, and he taught me a few things that he's learned. I went over and saw his setup, and he's been sharpening my blades ever since I've had the mill. Now, I've got the opportunity to do it for myself, and since I'm a dealer and also selling blades, I may offer this as a service I provide to my customers. I guess before I start using the setter, I should explain what setting a blade means for those who maybe are new to it or aren't familiar with that. When you've got your blade setting like this and you've got a tooth every so often, the first tooth is going to be straight up and down. The second tooth will be lean this way, the third tooth lean this way, fourth tooth up and down. They alternate where every third tooth is to the right, every third tooth is straight, every third tooth is to the left. And that happens, that they're made that way to kind of create a saw curve. Because if your blade was only the exact width of the main part of the metal, the main part of the blade, you'd be pinching your blade all the time. You need to open just a little bit more cutting area than the thickness of the blade. The sharpener comes with its own stand and then you have the option to use the stand or to mount it onto a table. The setter doesn't come with a stand, so you really need something to mount it on, and then you just screw it down with three holes in the center. So I've screwed it to this table, but I think I'd like this to stick out just a little bit further, and I'd like the blade to be kind of level. So I'm also going to screw a 2x4 down to the table this direction, so the backside of the blade sits on that 2x4. I've got my 2x4 on there. I think it's going to do a good job of holding this. Now we got vertical slots right here, and we're just going to set the blade into those slots. I started to put the blade in here and realized I've got this entire thing backward. This lever that advances the blade should be on my right side. So now we're going to set the blade in. I set one side in this slot, lift this up, set the other side in that slot. I think that 2x4 is going to give me just about the right height. I can advance it like this so it doesn't sound so bad as it advances. I'm going to spray this with a little bit of Rust Patrol. I've been using Rust Patrol for over a year now as a replacement for WD-40 because it's actually a lubricant, but it's also a penetrating oil. So we'll spray just a little bit on here. And should help a little bit with this rusty blade. I actually considered getting a wire brush and trying to clean all the rust off these blades. I think what I'm going to do instead is just saturate this rag in Rust Patrol and then hold this along the bottom side of the blade and advance it 360 degrees and at least get some lubricant on it all the way around. So now we're going to set this to the outside, slide it over this stud right here, and open the jaws and drop it down over the blade, and it will rest on another stud here. So all the height is set up for you. Now what we're going to do is look down the profile of this and see which blade because as we compress this, I'll go half a rotation. As I pull this handle, it's going to push the tooth in. So right now, we want to set all teeth that are pointed towards me. So as I look down it, this one here is pointed towards me. This one's straight. This one is pointed away. So the next tooth should be towards me. Okay, but when it advances, it advances three teeth. So that one's away. We're going to go... Right here we've got a tooth that is pointed towards me. So now I turn this gauge on, and this gives me a digital reading of how far I'm adjusting the tooth. As I push this forward to where that tooth was ready to be set, it wasn't lined up perfectly. That's something we can easily adjust here. Back off a, a bolt and turn out this stop until the travel of this arm lines the tooth up 
directly with the anvil on the setter. Really simple, only takes a second. The second adjustment is a stop screw right here that determines how far you're setting the tooth. And for that, I'll need to look in the book and find out what the best number is for millimeters of inflection I want on that tooth. This part could be a little bit confusing. I'm going to explain it, but referencing the manual will still help. But if you squeeze this handle until the blade pushes flat, pushing the blade flat will give you a reading on this gauge right here. On this one, it is 0.49. That is how much set the tooth has. So right now I'm squeezing the handle until it bottoms out on this bolt. And there I get a reading of 1.3. There guide is that if you want a tooth set of 0.55 millimeters you want a reading on this as you set it at 1.2 so i'm at 1.3 i'm going to extend this bolt out just slightly this can vary depending on the type of blade you have things like that but right now i'm using their example and setting it up by the instructions so now I squeeze this hard, I'm at 1.25 millimeters, then I squeeze it down just until the blade's flat, and my tooth right here has a 0.54 offset, and they are recommending 0.55. So now I'll pull this all the way back, and then all the way forward, and it goes one tooth, two, and three. Stops it lined up with that third tooth. Now, instead of bending it, I can just push this in and get the reading. This one's currently at 0.38. So when the tooth was new, when the blade was new, it had a 0.55 offset. Currently has a 0.38 offset, so it's been flattened some. So now I'm going to squeeze it all the way down to give it a new offset. Now it's 0.57. So now it's a matter of repetition. So I go one, two, three, squeeze, squeeze. And one mistake I made here is it says to start at your weld, and I didn't do that. So I actually need to mark where I did start at. And the reason it has you do that is your spacing could be slightly different on the one with the welds. So if you start right in front of the weld, you'll end up getting better spacing. All right, so I put a little paint mark on the first tooth I set. I go around and do this whole blade. Okay, so I've been all the way around the blade. Now I lift this out, lift it up, slide it off, rotate it, slide it back over the other side of that same bolt or same stud, drop it back down, and the settings should be the same. But now I need to move forward two teeth to one that is offset in that direction and set us up here now when we go one two three we're once again on a tooth set in that direction I tried to estimate the time I looked on my phone and it looked like about two minutes to do one side So you're looking at four minutes to run the setter on one blade So we have completely set this one blade. I think I have five blades that need sharpened So I'm gonna set all five blades then we'll take them all five to the sharpener But it's just repetition to show that in the video. So I'll meet you over there with five blades So right now I'm tilting the cutting head up out of the way 
and then I'm checking that we've got good blade geometry here. These holes allow you to lengthen and shorten these arms. And the manual said to run it on the third hole for these. When I did that, it didn't seem to want to roll smoothly throughout. So we're doing that, and then we're using this right here to adjust the height. And the whole point of this is we want this blade to roll smoothly through here when we turn it on. We're going to go ahead and do that. I've had it on. I actually had this running for the last five minutes and just tinkering with it. And I know it's rolling smooth through here. Smooth through there. Smooth through there. Also, this is the worst blade. This one might be ruined. Some of these teeth, the whole top's missing off of them. So, since I have this one blade that's in pretty bad shape, I'm going to use it for testing. So on this, there's a detent right here that you can see. And then there are, there are markings for 7, 10, and 14. So out of the three detents, I'm going to go to the one in the center, and that'll give us the 10 degree angle on our blades. There's also a tension clamp here. If you get this too loose, then when it pushes forward, if there's any binding... It'll actually slide back. And I had this too loose the first time I turned it on. And I was seeing it kind of bounce back. So I tensioned this up until it quit. And then just went a little bit more. You can hear it struggle there to push. So that's clearly, clearly too much. So now we've got this set right. We've got everything where the blade rolls smoothly. Now to set up the cutting head. So we're about two inches above the blade. Now the target is to adjust this down until it's just almost touching. So now this is advancing to the point as this gets low enough, it's going to hit the advancer, which pushes the, the teeth. So we need to back this off until that's not an issue. Pushes it forward, still pushing it way too far forward. So we'll just keep backing this off until it's not. Now we need to let the head down further. It's just a matter of fine-tuning this until it's going to work. So now we're really close. I think we can go ahead and turn our grinding wheel on.
So in theory, these are all the same blades. It shouldn't take much adjustment, but let's find out if that's accurate or not. Maybe this blade's more worn down, so the other one needs just a little bit of adjustment. So we just flip that up. We've got the power off. Take this knob loose here. Actually, I'm gonna see how long it actually takes, including like setup time. So let's start a stopwatch. We finish sharpening one blade, we're gonna do the second blade. There are probably already two comments that are incoming and they're both correct. One, I made that look harder than it needed to be. And two, I should be wearing gloves. You are right. So we're gonna turn it on and get the blade moving. Make sure we're not over tightened, but we're tight enough and it's moving okay. We'll drop the head down. Put it in slow. Go ahead and turn the blade on. So apparently it doesn't take as long as they say. I didn't stop the timer, but it was at seven minutes and 40 seconds when it shut off. It took me longer than 40 seconds to switch the blades out. So you really could do it in seven minutes if the blades were right here. Even seven minutes includes the time to clamp it into the system. Probably actually only takes four or five minutes to run. But I'm very impressed with this. And I think those are going to be sharp. Oh yeah. So. Paul told me the way you tell if a tooth is sharp is you can do the same thing with the chainsaw. Run the back of your fingernail across it. And looks good. And not bad at all for about four minutes to set a tooth and seven minutes to sharpen it. Just being generous, you could say four blades an hour. You could set and sharpen. That's at 11 minutes. You could really probably do five, but four or five blades an hour. So... See if I listed blade sharpening at $7 a blade, I'd be making $25 an hour recouping expenses on anyone who wanted to come do it. In terms of different blades, this cam that's right here can be changed out for all different types of blades. They've got them that say Wood Miser, they've got them that say Wood Max, and there's another one, 37 Rippers or something like that. And that cam will just, it's the difference in the the spacing between the blades. But when you think about a blade costs $25, but say you can sharpen it five times, it only takes you 11 minutes to sharpen it. That time almost doesn't cost you anything. So you sharpening them five times, you reduce your blade cost from $25 a blade down to $5 per blade usage. Pretty dramatic difference. 50 blades pays for the unit. And I'd say most guys who buy a sawmill are planning to do more work than that. So if you're using it a couple times a year, just buy new blades. 
you're using your mill all the time, I'd say this is a pretty good value. Now, there are several different options from Woodland Mills. You can get their standard blade sharpener, you can get the Pro, you can get the sharpener alone or sharpener and setter combo. The best value is to get the combo. So this is the Pro sharpener in a combo with the setter. But I'm really impressed with the design and the ingenuity of this. Everything works perfectly right out of the box. Easy setup without knowing anything about it. So well done, Woodland Mills. And I appreciate you guys for taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.